Hello everyone, my name is Peter Willendrup. I'm an employee of the Technical University of Denmark and the uh, European Spallation Source. And I'm here representing the MaxDAS team and we will report on how we have been using uh, the OpenACC technology from NVIDIA to speed up our legacy simulation code uh, using uh, GPUs. Um, so I will briefly explain to you what uh, MaxDAS is and then I will explain why and how MaxDAS was ported to GPU. I will report on how fast uh, and how well it works. And I will show the few ne steps necessary to port an instrument or component to the GPU and finally conclude. MaxDAS is uh, an approximately 25 year old code and a flexible general simulation utility for neutron scattering experiments. Uh, it's a common effort of uh, DTU, ILL, PSI, University of Copenhagen and ESS DMSC. And we're a small dedicated team, but we've received many contributions from our users worldwide. We have a similar code called uh, MagXTrace and between the two projects, we share code base tools and infrastructure. Um, instruments uh, as they are described in MaxDAS contain components that realize the different beamline parts. This covers of course, Newton sources, optics, various types of matter that you can put in your instrument as a sample and then detectors or monitors to probe your Newton beam. And MaxDAS is very portable. It runs on single CPUs. It runs parallelly on uh, CPUs using what is called MPI. And then, then also we've now added GPU support uh, for NVIDIA GPUs. We have 250 components. We have 250 instruments that exemplify how to use the components. MaxDAS uses a domain specific language so you write your instrument file in this and a code generation mechanism then generates a C code and a pro component or sorry, a, 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 um, a program that contains exactly the components that you put in your instrument. Um, we started uh, the events that brought us to GPU around 2017 when Emmanuel Fahi started the uh, uh, modernization of our code generator hereby laying out the framework uh, that allowed us to port MaxDAS to the GPU. Um, we also uh, took advantage of multiple uh, open ACC hackathons uh, arranged by, uh, by uh, NVIDIA, um, going to Dresden and, uh, and to ESPO. And we also have uh, held our own dedicated uh, hackathon to allow us to work uh, very concentratedly on the problem of porting MaxDAS to GPU. Uh, I would also say that uh, the lockdowns of uh, Corona actually also helped quite a bit in terms of securing, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, a, a quiet uh, home office where I could quite concentrate quite a bit. And this means that in the uh, uh, end of 2020, uh, we released the first TPU release uh, from XS. Uh, there was an update at the end of 2021, and I expect that the next release will be uh, end of this year. So why consider GPUs for MaxDAS in the first place? GPUs have great potential for speeding up what can be thought of as, a, as intrinsically parallel problems. And MaxDAS is in fact already embarrassingly parallel because every neutron in the simulation can be handled independently. Uh, the total cost of ownership or the needed energy to perform a floating point operation uh, is greener or cheaper than for CPUs. Um, why did we then use OpenACC? This is because OpenACC allows us to very elegantly retrofit uh, Pragmas to our aging software framework. And this have put us in a situation where exactly identical code now runs both on CPU and GPU. The foreseen use case uh, for this is of course that uh, um, this allows us to do simulations um, together with an ongoing experiment. So this means that, that we as planning for an experiment or as, as a helping tool during the experiment uh, should rather be as fast at least as the experiment. And especially in this case, modern day spallation sources. So I'm here thinking of, uh, for instance, the ESS uh, really pose uh, quite a, an effort for us because they run in event mode and, uh, and contain uh, for many of the instruments quite sophisticated sample descriptions. Um, so how does it uh, 
actually feel when you run a GPU simulation with MaxTest. So the whole initialization, uh, defining the, the geometry, reading files from disk, et cetera, uh, um, works exactly the same as on as on GPU because in fact, uh, sorry, uh, as on CPU because in fact it takes place on the CPU as usual. Memory structures are built on the CPU and then these are marked for transfer to the GPU where the whole trace or the whole simulation, uh, ray tracing simulation of the Newtons takes place uh, on, on the GPU. At the end of this, we collect the, uh, the monitor arrays or the neutron data uh, of the GPU, and these are then saved exactly as would happen in a normal CPU simulation. And this means that the GPU experience is quite, uh, uh, let's say, transparent. It feels like exactly like running on a CPU, but you may run faster on the GPU. The question is then how much faster? So here I'm looking at an idealized instrument only containing a uh, a source and a monitor. This means no neutrons are lost or absorbed during the simulation. And this is uh, thus a good indication of uh, the maximum speed of we can achieve. For a modern day uh, data center card from NVIDIA called the A100, this actually results in three orders of magnitude speed up. If you have access to a V100, which is a slightly older card, or older card uh, that clocks in at a factor of around 600, which is also very nice. Older gamer GPUs like uh, a GeForce 1080, this is then something like 10% of the V100, just to give you a ballpark of what you may uh, achieve. So more importantly, going to more real world problems. So here is uh, the Brookhaven H8 triple X's modeled with and without splits. So splits is actually a kind of a CPU variance reduction uh, mechanism that we've uh, defined in MaxTAS. So every neutron making it to the monochromator of the instrument is actually split in 10 to boost, uh, let's say the statistics of, of the, the scattered beam. And this we've done both at monochromator sample and uh, finally uh, analyzer. And this of course means that we boost effectively the final statistics by three orders of magnitude. So running the problem this way, we get a speed of, of something like a factor of 28 on an A100 card. Uh, whereas if we take out the splits, we reach more than two orders of magnitude. On the other hand, uh, as explained, the statistics in the final monitor is of course, three orders of magnitude higher on the lift. So this means that in a way, just looking at the run times, this is a uh, too naive, uh, a figure of merit. Um, but it, it shows you how your, let's say your already existing uh, MaxTAS instruments may be uh, sped up. Um, a similar uh, situation is found for uh, the PSI DMC diffractometer here. So that runs uh, either 20 or 75 times uh, faster uh, with or without the splits at monochromator and sample position. So looking across uh, the example suite of MaxTAS, sample only simulations, so basically simulations with uh, a source sample and detector only, these often clock, clock in at a factor of 50. Uh, full instrument descriptions like those you just saw are typically around a factor of two, 20 or 30, but actually uh, there is an example here, the uh, ESS IN5 uh, rep rate instrument from uh, Kim Leffman actually has a speed up of 160. Um, surprisingly, the optics only simulations I've also done, so things that contain more or less just a guide element is actually only a factor of five faster here. So what the message is, is that there's room for much more optimization. Uh, we will look at how to handle, uh, handle splits better on the GPU and we will investigate key components like for instance, the Newton guides. So what you are looking at here will only get better in the long run. Uh, I also have a report from uh, Garrett Granroth at, uh, at Oak Ridge, and they've been running incident beam simulations for a number of Oak Ridge or uh, uh, let's say um, Spallation Newton source instruments. So ARCs, GP Sands, and SNAP, and they find uh, uh, speed ups of uh, more than two and even three orders of magnitude here. So 
I was saying before that a maximum uh, speed up that I could foresee was a factor of 1000. In this case, they must have been running with uh, a slightly slower CPU. So this clocks in at uh, two, uh, 2000 almost. So, but again, three orders of magnitude, very, very nice. As you can see in the lower graph here, the simulations run on CPU and TPU don't differ. There is no statistical uh, significance between them. And the message is that we are now in a situation where you may run supportive simulations on GPU that are as fast or faster than the ongoing experiment uh, that you're doing, which is really nice. Porting uh, an instrument is actually quite simple. Uh, there is a, a how-to on our wiki that explains all the steps. Here I will elaborate the most important ones. If you have flex or variable it's in your instrument that vary together with the Newton, these have to become user vars. This means that they actually become part of the Newton. So that is an important Maxtas uh, 3 addition here. If you have instrument variables that you want to use in, in, uh, in trace, so meaning things that are not an input, but something like the direct beam uh, um, uh, integer here, which is put in the declare block, this has to receive pragmas to uh, be created and updated on, uh, on the GPU. And also importantly, if you're using monitor ND in your instrument, your user vars have to be given with a string. So the user vars of monitor ND are now a string type, and they should then match what you put in your instrument user var block. Uh, supporting components to, uh, to MaxTas3 is also not uh, too difficult. One important point is that the definition, uh, definition parameter uh, type variable is no longer supported. All variables has to become setting parameters. Uh, specifically, uh, if you have a string, this is simply possible to move directly to the uh, list of setting parameters because setting parameters now support strings. Uh, we've also defined a, a vector class, uh, and this means that you can initialize uh, an array, either by a comma-separated list with values, like you see here, or uh, from uh, an array or pointer in your instrument file. Uh, the base type of the vector is uh, a double. The declare block in your component must have simple content, and this means that uh, variables have to be listed one at a time with their type, and this is simply because this is injected directly to the Newton struct. If you have functions in your component that you use in uh, trace, and if these functions uh, use the random number generator, you have to pass the particle because the random number ge generator state is carried with each particle independently. Uh, declare uh, parameters in your component should clearly not be used to store particle derived information. So if you calculate something in your uh, trace section, which is a function of the incoming neutron, you should rather use a local trace scope variable instead. Um, yeah, uh, external libraries are uh, not directly possible, but we have a, a workaround here, which is called NoACC, that forces the given component to run back on the CPU, adding, of course, an overhead of transfer between CPU and GPU. All our instruments in MaxDAS uh, 3 uh, can utilize GPUs, uh, 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 so please use these as an uh, inspiration. You need an NVIDIA card in your machine. You need to install the, N the NVIDIA HPC software development kit, and then you may actually simply use MC run with the input uh, flag of uh, minus minus uh, open ACC here, sorry. Uh, so it is really very, uh, very much like what you're used to doing with MC run or MC GUI. In conclusion, this really does work very nicely. Code changes are much less invasive that we, uh, than we envisioned. It is implemented in a very transparent way often gives a factor of one or two orders speed up over one CPU core. It is now used for pre or in experiment simulations at uh, Oak Ridge and runs at least as uh, fast as real time, meaning uh, as fast as the experiment. Most things uh, work already and we have uh, workarounds uh, or solutions for things in MaxDAS that uh, is not uh, yet supported on GPU. Uh, it is now fully ported to GPU, but is not uh, fully optimized performance-wise, uh, and this means that we will likely try to go to another hackathon. And that was uh, the message from the MaxTest team. Thank you very much.